afternoon, everyone, and welcome. This would be the first briefing uh, of the new Ethiopian calendar. It's going to be very brief um, with a preliminary update on an activity that the Prime Minister had undertaken um, on New Year's Day, with, as well as humanitarian updates. So on New Year's, um, on Saturday, September 11th, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed visited the Western Command of the National Defense Forces at the Maiz Abri Front to celebrate Ethiopian New Year with them and encourage them to continue guarding the nation. During his remarks uh, to the members of the ENDF, he indicated the efforts being undertaken to build a modern national defense force that pays allegiance to the unity and territorial integrity of the country. He further thanked the members of the NDF for demonstrating compassion in the line of duty towards apprehended TPLF fighters and in adherence to their uh, military code of conduct. Moving on to uh, humanitarian response updates uh, in the northern part of the country. Uh, this is data that has been received from the National Disaster Risk Management Commission, which is uh, uh, part of the Emergency Coordination Committee at the federal level. I will break it down into uh, updates of the three regions where humanitarian assistance is being uh, provided. In Tigray, to begin with, humanitarian flights for personnel, cargo, and cash is still ongoing, and movement is being undertaken from Addis Ababa to Magali through the UN Human Humanitarian Air Service flight. Um, a new thing that has transpired over the past week is an EU humanitarian air bridge has also started humanitarian flights to Tigray region. As of September 14, 2021, 32 partners have been granted permits to transport a total of uh, Ethiopian Bir 144 million to Magali for their humanitarian operations. And this is something that will uh, continually go based on uh, evaluations that is being undertaken by the committee. Humanitarian partners uh, that include uh, the World Food Program and uh, GOP, which is a CRS-led consortium, are currently operating within the Tigray region and dispatching food to what it does and distributing to beneficiaries. Um, the data that I have, or the report that I have, as of September 14, 2021, humanitarian partners have deployed 590 trucks to transport humanitarian cargo from Samara to Magali. Uh, 15,000 or more than 50,000 metric tons of food has been transported, which includes wheat, oil, pulse, corn, soybean. Uh, more than or close to 6,000 metric tons of non-food items have been transported. Um, close to 760,000 liters of fuel has also been transported, and uh, over 1,000 uh, metric tons of seed has also been transported to enable agricultural activities. Um, as of September 14, 2021, no trucks are stranded in Samara and checkpoints at this moment. Since uh, checkpoints have been decreased from seven to two uh, checkpoints, the movement of humanitarian assistance into the region has been further amplified and facilitated by the government, and no access issues have been noted as a result. Uh, resultantly, the often raised uh, challenges by humanitarian actors has been lifted. Although this issue has been addressed to facilitate uh, smooth flow, the number of trucks being dispatched by humanitarian actors has not increased. So we have a situation where checkpoints have been decreased from seven to two. Um, all of these obstacles um, uh, that had been uh, uh, reiterated several times by humanitarian actors have now been uh, facilitated for a smooth humanitarian uh, flow uh, by reducing these checkpoints. Nevertheless, we are witnessing that there's not a, a high number of trucks uh, with humanitarian assistance that is entering, and this is the responsibility of humanitarian actors. Relatedly, what I would like to emphasize is, uh, this is specific to one agency, of 466 trucks that have entered the, the region to deliver humanitarian assistance. Uh, 428 trucks are yet to exit the region. So what we're witnessing is perhaps close to 40 trucks are the only ones that have exited the region. So this is raising speculation on their utility um, as it relates to delay in return uh, to other regions where humanitarian assistance is being loaded onto these trucks. Moving on to the Afar region, uh, the government together with the World Food Program is mobilizing resources for internally displaced uh, persons uh, whose situation has been aggravated uh, by TPLS provocations and attacks. As of September 14, uh, 2021, uh, the Disaster Risk Management Commission and WFP have distributed uh, over 10,000 quintals of food for more than 70,000 displaced people. Assisted beneficiaries um, are IDPs from six waradas in the Afar region. Uh, similarly, the food consists of wheat flour, rice, uh, corn soy blend, uh, pulse oil, and wheat. 
and this response will be continuing by the government and humanitarian partners. Uh, specifically for Afar as well, food assistance has been secured through to October 2021. Lastly, on humanitarian assistance within the Amhara region, the number of displaced persons has exceeded more than 500,000, as had been stated the last time. Um, internally displaced persons are, are mainly from Wagamra, North Gondar, South Gondar, North Wallo, and South Wallo zones of the region. IDPs who have been displaced from different waradas in North Wallo due to uh, TPLS provocations and attacks. Uh, and currently sheltered in Dese town uh, have reached uh, over 270,000. As of September 14, uh, 2021, the National Disaster Risk Management Commission and partners have distributed over 27,000 quintals of food for IDPs in Dese town. More than 178,000 beneficiaries have been reached as a result per reports uh, that have been received. Nine trucks loaded with uh, 2,670 quintals of food have been dispatched to IDPs in the Wagamra zone. As of September 8, 2021, five trucks uh, have reached and unloaded 1,940 quintals of food for North Wallo beneficiaries who have been in Dawant Warada and uh, Orda distributed the food for over 11,000 uh, beneficiaries and this is uh, uh, a local uh, agency that has been tasked with the distribution uh, of food while WFP is the main uh, uh, partner that is acting uh, in the region. However, assistance to some waradas in the northern part of Wallo that are besieged by the terrorist group TPLF have been hindered. Uh, as you know, North Wallo is one of the areas under the safety net uh, program and prone to food insecurity. As such, TPLF's hindrance for humanitarian actors to reach uh, civilians in need is worsening the situation. Not only has the terrorist group uh, destroyed the livelihood of people in the region, but it is also holding uh, hostage the people of North Wallo and systematically blocking assistance from reaching uh, these people who are in need. Coordination mechanism as it pertains to assistance, uh, particularly for uh, the newly affected regions. The Regional Emergency Coordination Center has been also activated in Bahardar and uh, Samara town to closely work with the National Emergency uh, Coordination Center. Um, I had mentioned also that incident command posts had been uh, created uh, in the Afar region as well. And a further update is that this has been activated in Gondar and Desi town to further strengthen the communication and coordination mechanism uh, on the ground level. Relevant federal ministries and regional sector bureaus are assigned expertise in the coordination platforms and all clusters which include food, uh, wash programs, health, education, shelter and agriculture are also members of the emergency coordination uh, center. Uh, in stakeholder meetings held with international humanitarian organizations uh, as recent as yesterday, partners have been advised to scale up their assistance to beneficiaries in the Amhara and Afar regions who have been displaced from their homes and livelihoods affected uh, by the TPLF. So assistance to these two regions warrants the same level of intensity and support shown um, as there are those who are in desperate need in these regions uh, due to TPLF's uh, incursions. So uh, this message has been um, uh, uh, emphasized to humanitarian partners that the assistance that goes to the Amhara region and the Afar region needs also the same level of uh, um, uh, concern and uh, focus as has been for, for the other region. Lastly, uh, before I open it up to questions, among the many key milestones, uh, when we're reviewing some of the key milestones of the concluded Ethiopian year 2013, one of the key milestones that has been achieved is uh, um, the successful conclusion of the six national elections, uh, with the exception of some areas, and uh, these areas that for security reasons at that point in time in June when the elections had, uh, uh, had been going on uh, were not part of it, they will be undertaking uh, elections within the next week and people will be going to the polls to cast their vote. But this is still a monumental uh, moment for the country for having um, in, a, in a, a year of many upheavals and also a lot of triumphs to have successfully concluded the six national ele elections. And the peaceful conclusion of the elections has been monumental for Ethiopia in the country's journey to democratizing and the results of the elections have given legitimacy uh, to a government of the people. Resultantly, October 4, 2021 will mark the formation of a new government that will continue paving the path for a new dispensation for Ethiopia. So this is something that's upcoming within the next uh, uh, two weeks. 
So with these minor updates, I will open it up to address questions uh, from your end, and we'll start from the center. Robbie Iskander Kroom, and then we'll come to this section. Robbie. Thank you for the briefing. Um, la last week you mentioned that the TPLF uh, was no longer present in Afar, and I know you just gave an update now about preparations to get more aid uh, into Tigray via Samara. As I understand it, since September 7th, there haven't been any new trucks that have gone in, so I was just wondering why that would be the case if there's no longer hostilities in that part of the country, and if the TPLF's incursion is no longer a factor. Uh, and then secondly, you mentioned the Prime Minister's visit to the Western Command. Uh, he was widely quoted by media there as referring to the military operations as a quote-unquote training exercise. And I was wondering if you could clarify what he meant by that. And is there not a risk of trivializing or of being perceived to trivialize uh, the deaths of soldiers who have been involved and civilians who have been caught up in the conflict? Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Robbie. Um, you mentioned that as of September 7, there has been there has not been trucks that have been going into the region. I think um, it's important to direct or redirect these questions to humanitarian actors that have the responsibility and the mandate to deliver humanitarian assistance within the Tigray region. There are certain pockets that the federal government, uh, particularly within Western Tigray, that is tasked with uh, delivering humanitarian assistance, and that responsibility is being um, undertaken by the federal government. But as I was mentioning to you, only from the 400-something trucks that had gone into the region, um, there is speculation for what they're being utilized because these trucks have to return. But um, uh, again, these checkpoints have been reduced. Um, a lot of the, um, the challenges humanitarian actors have um, insisted were in place for them to effectively deliver humanitarian assistance. All those have been removed. Um, the area and the corridor is now um, accessible, so I think it's important to uh, determine with humanitarian actors what are the challenges from their own end um, that is maybe hindering them from providing assistance to the region. But uh, from the federal government side, uh, this has been uh, facilitated and um, taken care of. Uh, with regards to your query on the Prime Minister's visit to the Western Command, um, it's, uh, I mean, it's quite interesting because, I mean, um, this is, um, on New Year's Day, to, to have been amidst the National Defense Forces, it uh, shows the solidarity and it shows the support uh, for those that have lost their lives, that have made many sacrifices. And among a plethora of uh, uh, agendas and uh, activities that the Prime Minister is tasked with, to have been there physically is to show uh, support, to give a moral boost to the overall National Defense um, architecture. Um, and show solidarity, as I was saying, as the Prime Minister represents the people. So amongst all of the things that he has said, particularly shedding light on Ethiopia's ambition to strengthen uh, the, as part of its military uh, reforms or the military sector and the security sector reforms, as part of the aspirations to build uh, and continue strengthening the national defense forces, um, to pr preserve the territorial integrity of the country, to protect citizens, if that is the one aspect of his statement that is going to be expounded on, I really think the triviality that you mentioned is on where the focus is being laid by um, individuals who are popping that up. But the context in which the Prime Minister was uh, giving the statement is indicating that Ethiopia, as a large country of 110 million, has got uh, security needs, um, is uh, also uh, working very focused in a focused manner on ensuring that the National Defense Forces as a departure from where it was before in allegiance to a particular party and a particular group of people is now a representation of the Ethiopian people as well. So there has been an ongoing military reform exercise. So what he's insinuating is that these aspirations to ensure that uh, not only the composition of the National Defense Forces, but also the strength and also the, the manner in which it safeguards uh, the people of Ethiopia is something that is uh, being focused on and uh, is encouraging them to be part of that journey. So I, I really don't want to respond to the other one. Eskander. Thank you very much. Uh, the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights and the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission 
briefed the council on the on progress made uh, in the joint investigation on alleged human rights violations in Tigray. Uh, what did the federal government expect from uh, this investigation? And just this morning, a mass burial was held in the first Mocha town of South Gondar zone for 52 civilians allegedly uh, massacred by TPLF forces. Will the government request or has already requested for a similar joint investigation into such uh, killings in uh, Amhara and Afar regions? Uh, another question, uh, US Congresswoman uh, Karen Baz said uh, she will hold discussions with Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed during her upcoming visit to uh, Ethiopia. Has a meeting been already arranged? Can you confirm that? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Skander. On your first question with regards to the UN Higher Commission for Human Rights, uh, the joint investigation, if you recall um, the government's disposition when this was initially launched was uh, full cooperation uh, towards the investigation and the position of the government um, that all credible, credible, I would like to repeat, allegations of serious human rights violations um, that have been reported in relation to the situation in Tigray and other parts of the region should be thoroughly investigated. So this is a position that the Ethiopian government still continues uh, to stand by as well. So we are still looking forward to the, the report that would be coming in November 1. But as you, as you mentioned, uh, the government has also pointed to the temporal scope of uh, the joint investigation, particularly because the findings are limited to, um, I believe, um, the cutoff period for the joint investigation was uh, the declaration of the unilateral uh, ceasefire, humanitarian ceasefire by the, by the government. So this really does not put into account the really egregious human rights violations that have been um, committed by TPLF in the Amhara region, in the Afar region, and I would also dare say within the Tigray region because the reports that we're getting right now is um, citizens within the Tigray region are being mobilized to go to the front to support um, TPLF senseless uh, war, um, and those that are not complying, those that are not giving off uh, their children are being attacked. Um, individuals and youth um, that are being pushed to the war front who have a tendency to return back to their communities are also being killed, saying that you are costing us the war. So all of these egregious uh, rights violations, uh, particularly in Amhara region and Afar region, and also what is um, happening under the watch of TPLF within the Tigray region, need to also be part of this investigation. So the Ethiopian government holds that, and this has also uh, been shared. So we do hope that there will be an opportunity to address uh, uh, this aspect of it. Nevertheless, um, the Ethiopian government still um, uh, is grateful for the measures uh, that have been taken uh, in terms of uh, ensuring this independent investigation is uh, had been undertaken on the ground. On your query with regards to Congresswoman Karen Bass's visit uh, to Ethiopia, this is being uh, managed by uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and as soon as the itinerary is finalized, I'm sure that they will be uh, providing details around that. Thank you, Skander. Uh, thank you so much, Beleni, for the opportunity. Um, my first question this morning we have read uh, from the verified uh, social media account of the Ethiopian National Defense Force that they are calling on uh, people of Tigray, the youth, the militia, to surrender um, in exchange for perhaps pardon, protection, and uh, any health services. Uh, uh, can you please confirm this? And also, is there uh, any other call that the government May perhaps reiterating the same fact that the Defense Force is saying uh, in this regard. The second question, again, this morning um, we have heard from Cairo that uh, the Foreign Minister of DR Congo representing his president uh, has met uh, Egyptian officials in order to begin uh, the AU-led discussions. Uh, how is Ethiopia receiving this news and is there any uh, planned meeting between the three countries uh, uh, perhaps uh, mediated by the African Union. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Guru. On well, your first query, um, the National Defense Forces did issue a statement uh, over the past uh, few days, um, and this is calling upon um, citizens within the, the region of Tigray who are being um, who are being flocked to the war front by the TPLF, um, a generation of youth that um, outside of their desire to engage in this are being pushed 
um, in exchange for humanitarian assistance and the survival needs. So this call, um, if you recall uh, some several months ago as well, uh, there has been various statements that had been issued uh, from the government um, asking uh, TPLF fighters to lay down their arms and surrender. And this call surrender was again amplifying the message that the federal government is wanting to apprehend those in the key leadership structures within the PLF who are responsible for the atrocities that have been committed over the past uh, 10 months of this conflict, who are responsible for the atrocities that have been orchestrated over the past three years, and who are uh, the key uh, actors in terms of uh, what has transpired over the past 27 years within Ethiopia, including uh, the architects of ethnic strife within the country as well. So this call had been made uh, before, asking uh, uh, them to lay down their arms, that there would be a blanket amnesty as so long as uh, the key people that are uh, wanted are apprehended. So this call by, then, by the National Defense Forces is again showing this uh, humanity because the people of Tigray are our, our own people as well and knowing full well that they are being flocked by the TPLF for a purpose for purposeless war that the TPLF um, has engaged in. Um, there's uh, child soldiers, again, there's new evidence uh, surfacing of new uh, flock of child soldiers that are being also put um, at, the, at the forefront. So this is a message to the people uh, within the Tigray region, as well as uh, their fellow uh, brothers and sisters outside of the country in the diaspora, who keep fueling um, this aggression, uh, who keep feeding and uh, keep mobilizing for TPLF's continued aggression to really think about the future of the region and to really think about the youth of Tigray that are being decimated for TPLF's uh, one-sided uh, you know, uh, claim to, to power, which is not going to come to pass. So that is the spirit of the NDF's um, call for surrender. In your reference to uh, the new call for uh, trilateral negotiation, Ethiopia still holds the position and has continued to hold the position that um, we would like an amicable uh, resolution to this, that it needs to be uh, Africa-focused and Africa-managed. So this new call to resume the talks is something that has been taken positively and uh, is being facilitated by the relevant uh, entities in this regard. Okay, so from this side would be Coletta, Elias, and Brooke. Coletta. Uh, thanks, Bilene. Uh, just a follow-up question on uh, Girum's question uh, um, on the issue of the trilateral talks. How genuine will the talks be, I mean, in a situation whereby we're now seeing more, te more diplomatic tension between Sudan and Ethiopia on, because of the northern uh, conflict in the northern region? Would this affect probably, is, is it Ethiopia concerned that it might affect the talks, the trilateral talks on the dams. Um, th then, uh, secondly, um, we're, we're kind of seeing the, the humanitarian agencies, for example, WFP, saying that it is calling for more funds because it's running out of funds because of um, an expanded humanitarian situation in the northern region. We now have 1.7 million people, uh, Afar and Amara. We're bound to have donor fatigue at some point because the, the conflict is protracted, and as well on the, on the government side. As you form a new government, y you should be able to to look, out, to look out for the rest of the country, not just the northern region. Is there a mechanism that is being planned maybe, apart from that general national dialogue that we have talked about, is there a mechanism for, to end uh, this issue a uh, non-military way that is being planned by the government, specifically for the northern region? Thanks. Okay, thank you, Coletta. Um, will the talks be genuine? I can't speak on the part of the other uh, parties to the talks, but I can speak to Ethiopia's intentions. Uh, Ethiopia has always maintained uh, the position that amicable use of uh, Nile waters is something uh, that Ethiopia is championing for. Um, it has the right to use the Nile waters and it has always wanted to negotiate in good faith and has always negotiated in, f in good faith. So in terms of the genuinity of the talks, the negotiating side from the Ethiopian uh, end will always go into these talks with the genuine uh, aspect of not causing harm to riparian countries, particularly to our brothers and sisters in the Sudan and to the Egypt as well. This is something that um, has been consistently being portrayed and this is a position that Ethiopia still continues to maintain. Uh, with regards to the other element that you asked or the second question that you asked, um, I still defer back to the same uh, statement that I had given you, which is uh, the upcoming national dialogue, which would uh, facilitate uh, a process that you've talked about towards this. Um, apart from the donor fatigue, I mean, 
Ethiopians are also supporting their fellow uh, brothers and sisters. And this call is actually um, also something that is being put to Ethiopians throughout the country and also in the diaspora to keep supporting because this aspect of supporting each other is something that's inherent to our culture and our social fabric. And this is something that we still call upon. Um, even after this uh, challenging phase does cease, uh, uh, will eventually cease as well. But the support to communities that have been displaced, it will take time to also put them back into place. So amplifying this message of support, particularly with Ethiopians in the diaspora and the Ethiopians within, is something that is sought um, as our fellow compatriots in different parts of the region are affected by this. Uh, but like I said, a new government is information, so we will look forward to that dispensation and what would come across as part of that. Elias? Thank you. Um, uh, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed was recently in uh, Senegal. Senegal uh, uh, is going to be the host of the upcoming uh, China Africa Summit FOCAC. Um, th these are two leaders have discussion regarding um, the FOCAC Summit. And uh, generally, um, what does Ethiopia expect to uh, gain or to present itself in terms of um, uh, the agenda for uh, the upcoming FOCAC Summit? And uh, is there any preparation in regard to um, um, Ethiopia's role or, 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 uh, in the FOCAC Summit that's planned, I think, before the end of this year? OK, thank you, Elias. Um, the discussions that had been held uh, when the Prime Minister had traveled to Senegal, I had also expounded on it uh, last week, are within the scope of uh, continental support for one another, uh, Pan-Africanist agenda in terms of a common destiny, and um, ensuring that the, the path that we have embarked upon, um, not only as a country, as a region, but also as a continent towards uh, uh, realizing Agenda 2063 is done in a more enhanced manner and uh, with more focus uh, for solidarity among uh, key African countries and the, the continent as a whole. So as part of that, this is part of the discussion. Um, I don't have anything for you specific to what may have been raised with regards to FOCAC, but this Ethiopia's uh, commitment to work in strengthening relations uh, with China, but also within the context of being part of the African Union and also strengthening these ties um, as part of Africa-China relations is uh, something that uh, will continue as part of uh, uh, the, the strategy that had been adopted before as well. Thank you. Brook. All right, thank you very much. My, my first question is a follow-up on what you've said on the ENDF's call for TPLA fighters to surrender. So given the previous... Sorry, Brooke, can you say that again? I didn't catch the you. Ethiopian National Defense Forces call for the TPLA fighters to, to surrender. So given the previous experiences for, uh, from the calls that, that were made both by the government and the National Defense Forces, what kind of results do you expect from this call? And do you think the TPLA fighters would, would surrender to the Ethiopian National Defense Forces? And the other uh, question is, um, we've, we've previously seen that the TPLF has been sh showing captured Ethiopian National Defense Forces members uh, that were uh, held as prisoners of war in Tigray. So has the government ever um, managed to release some or, some or all of the, these prisoners of war or have, have any of them been released in the, in the past? And finally, well, the country has been going through a lot of developments in regards to political, economic, uh, diplomatic, and military front. So when, when do you think the Prime Minister will appear before the media to respond to some questions from us regarding these developments, especially during the just-ended Ethiopian uh, 2013 year? Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Brooke. What to expect from ENDF's call? Um, asking TPLA fighters to surrender. I think um, the dynamics are always continually shifting. Um, when this is being made, when this call is being made by the NDF, when this call is being made by the federal government, this is again an expression of humanity, an expression of compassion, um, understanding the, the challenges and the suffering that the people of Tigray are also being subjected to by, by TPLF's uh, um, arrogance and uh, egregious uh, uh, acts and also continued belligerence. Um, so the expectation is compliance because the people of Tigray deserve to also uh, live in peace. They deserve to live in harmony 
with their fellow Ethiopians as well. Um, and any obstacle for them uh, in terms of achieving these desires like any other human being needs to be uh, thoroughly addressed. And I think it's important uh, that uh, this message is uh, received within the, um, the spirit of solidarity that is received within the spirit of understanding that the Tigray region cannot sustain loss of an entire generation of youth um, as is being uh, uh, perpetrated by the TPLF as well. So I do believe that there is that need as well. But like I was saying, we're getting reports that they are being forced. So I think if uh, the people of Tigray in unison say enough to TPLF, understanding that this is uh, you know, something that they're uh, putting them for, for, for nothing that's going to be recovered because the interest of the federal government is also the peace of the, the people of Tigray. The interest of the federal government is uh, the well-being of the people of Tigray. If you do believe that there was um, a rebuilding program that had been initiated, there's been uh, close to 100 billion bir that had been put in terms of restoring services that had been damaged through TPLF's incursions within the region itself when it attacked, attacked the Northern Command. So it's coming from that spirit of understanding that uh, the people of Tigray have suffered under uh, enough under the TPLF, and it's important to really call a spade a spade from the perspective of those that are being forced to support uh, uh, the militia within the Tigray region. When will the Prime Minister uh, come uh, for an engagement with the media? I think Brooke engagement with the media happens in many forms, and um, I would dare say that Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed has been one of uh, the leading Prime Ministers in terms of his engagement with media in various formats, and this has continued. Uh, the earliest uh, or the most recent engagement has been in Mais Abri with the media as well, uh, documenting uh, his, in his activity with the National Defense Forces. So there's various uh, platforms and activities in which he is engaging and uh, that will continue to do so and uh, we'll see uh, in the new uh, or uh, within the next two weeks as well what those kind of engagements would look like. I thank you guys very much for today. Have a good day.